of Tops, a new Premiership League of Shame. You fucking let him all that! All of you! Police investigating football violence have arrested five men from Portsmouth. Caught on CCTV throwing stones at officers. Fucking scummers! And you see me walk through on a post through their city. Top of the league for arrests at football matches. One of the most notorious football firms in Britain and the country's youngest hooligan. Portsmouth is one of Britain's toughest towns. The historic naval city of Portsmouth, the most densely populated city in Britain. Home to 180,000 people who are crammed into row upon row of terraced houses on an island just 15 miles square. With a rich history of naval conflict and its dockyard roots, the people of Portsmouth are fiercely proud of their island. I think the fact is that Pompey, Portsmouth, has been spoiling for a fight since the 15th century. We're talking about a city that grew up around a dockyard. We're talking about a city that's been dedicated to the export of serious violence. In the 1930s, Portsmouth had the most productive dockyard industry in Britain. It was a breeding ground for proud, tough working class men. The success of the dockyards were mirrored by the achievements of the city's football team which won the old first division title and the FA Cup before the Second World War. People are very, very proud. You're always looking for a way of expressing that pride. And the best way of expressing it is to back the football team. And that's why the away support and the home support is phenomenal. By the late 70s, the dockyards were in decline and the once successful football team was languishing in the third division. But the support for the club was still strong and a hardcore group of fans developed into one of the most feared football hooligan firms in Britain. And we're still football fans, but we, you know, we've got another side to us, you know, if someone starts in here, then, you know, that's where you're going to defend yourself in here, and that's what we did. In this programme, we follow Portsmouth's notorious hooligan firm at the biggest game of the season. I'd imagine we'll get this all the way to the ground now. See whether they make a show or not. And we look at the emergence of a new wave of younger hooligans following the club. You don't have to be the hardest person as long as you know that when you're running in, you've got your mates behind you running in with you. It don't matter. Portsmouth is the only city in Britain on an island of its own. Its residents have developed a strong community spirit and an island mentality that means that they are very wary of outsiders. These are people who ha have a deep-seated hostility to anyone who's foreign. That's not just the French, that's people from Havant, and Havant is seven miles away. Nowhere is hostility shown to outsiders more openly than at football. Since the late 70s, Portsmouth has had a large number of hardcore supporters that have caused havoc on away trips and made their home ground of Fratton Park the most intimidating ground in Britain. Eddie Crispin was a member of the hardcore group of fans that became known as the 657 crew. We started going as a group sort of when we left school in the late 70s. And then Purcell brought out the uh, cheap rail travel. So everyone started going on the trains, I think about 82, 83, something like that. Well, this is Portsmouth South Sea Station. This is the meeting point um, for away game trips 20 years ago, you know, the height of the 657. Rob Sylvester was another member of the original 657 crew. Obviously, the name the 657 comes from, that was the first train you could get to London, or the earliest train you could get to London, so you could carry on the journey up north to uh, do what you've got to do up there. Occasionally you could have three or four rows with different firms at an away game. You'd pull up in London in the morning, bump into someone, pull up where you're going, bump into someone, back in London at night, and then back at Waterloo, you might bump into Millwall or something later at night. So we played Newcastle away, 